Hey everyone, my name is Jennifer and welcome to A Vintage Vanity. I am super excited for today's video because, well, you guys are here. And today we are going to be sewing up an apron from a vintage sewing pattern, but not just any vintage sewing pattern, one that you guys selected for me over on my Instagram page. Now before we get to the a vintage sewage, sure, we'll go with it, right? This is the part of my video where I share the love and I shout out a creator that I think you guys will like and should go check out. And this week it is going to be Modern Retro Girl. And if you guys have been around for a while, you know that JL is one of my best friends. And we actually met through YouTube, but uh, she fast became the Ethel to my Lucy, the she to my shenanigans. <laughs> But she also is not only a third of the Golden Era Girls, which is a Twitch scream. Scream? No. Well, no, we don't scream. We stream <laughs> where we talk every month about uh, classic movies, which I... Link, description, all that good stuff. But go ahead, go check out JL. You're going to love her, especially if you're always curious about skincare and um, makeup and beauty information. And she does a great job of covering cruelty free um, beauty products that are out there. And she does some amazing fashion as well. So go check her out. And with that, let's get sewage. What apron are we going to be sewing? I actually had a couple vintage aprons, so I went up on Instagram and I asked you guys to choose between these two, which one would you want me to go with? And you went with this one. And then I asked you guys to choose between these two, and you went with this one. And then the hard choice was to choose between these two. And let me tell you, it was 50-50 for quite a while, and just barely edging it out was this one. And from what I understood, you guys mainly chose this one because this one had a bib on the apron. I can't remember who said it, but somebody was like, if you don't have a bib on the apron, what's the purpose of an apron? And I am such a messy cooker that that made sense to me. So we are going to be going with this style right here. I really, really like the trim details on this apron. And I was like, you know what? I actually have pink striped fabric. So let's take a look at the pink stripe that I have. These are the two options that I have. And looking at the illustration, it looks like the width of the stripes is between the sizes that I have. So I'm not really sure right off the bat which one I wanna use and I like both of them. So we have the thinner striped, which I picked up from an estate sale and it is a beautiful fabric and it has like a really nice texture to it. The problem is I have almost five yards of this, which means that I could make probably a dress with it. So I'm not 100% sure that I want to take away from the yardage of this one, though I think it would look really, really cute, especially if I switched the direction of the stripe. Then we have the wider stripe, which is not a vintage fabric but we're not gonna hold that against it. It is a, a beautiful, beautiful color, and I love the bold striping. So I don't know which one I wanna do yet. So I think what we should do is actually pull out some trims and take a look at those next to the fabrics to decide what we want to embellish with, right? I pulled out my bins of mostly estate sailed vintage trims, and let's see what we have in here. Now, oh, I love so many of these. Definitely gonna need some eyelet. These are the options that we have right now, and I think we can get rid of a couple right away. As much as I love this blue and pink with the gold trim, I think it just doesn't kind of go with the vibe that we're going with, and I think it competes too much with the stripes. I love this embroidery, and I do think it would actually work. It works with the lighter and the darker pink, but I really kind of want to save this for something else. I really want to do a dress with this one. I definitely want to do eyelet. There is eyelet on the original pattern, so I think 
What I would actually like to do is go with maybe the smaller eyelet. We've got this one, which is great, but again, it's a little bit too wide and I don't wanna lose this detail here if I were to use it. In fact, this is a really good eyelet to actually sit on top of a project, but I do have this eyelet, which is a little bit wider. And I do like that, that it has the scallops on it because I love a good scallop detail. I almost hate to say it, but I am kind of leaning towards this one, but let's keep both of them as an option. And when we get it, everything cut out, we can actually look and see how each one is going to look. You know what I am thinking though? And if you saw my estate sale haul, which I'll place a link to on the screen, um, I picked up something phenomenal and I kind of might want to use this on it. Let me, let me grab it and see how this would look. You guys, I'm kind of loving it because this is what I'm thinking. This bottom part of the skirt right here, what if we had it this, right? And then we get to use that full gorgeous detail of it. I do have white cotton, which I could back this on the white cotton, which will give it a little bit more stiffness which would make it work really well as a skirt. Or not as a skirt, as an apron. I think I'm kind of loving that, right? I think that's it. Now, here's the other thing though. I feel like against the um, smaller stripe, I feel like it doesn't hold up as well. The stripe, I feel like it, it loses a little something in translation, like it can't compete with the fabulousness of the bottom, but I feel like the wider stripe can. I think that might be it. Okay, all right. We know what we're doing. We got plenty of this. So yeah, I'm excited. Let's get going. We're just gonna delve right into the pattern. According to the back, our view is gonna take a little less than two yards of fabric. And the other thing that I love is this pattern only costs 35 cents. Oh my, how things have changed. <laughs> and inside that as well, we have our instructions, just one sheet of instructions. And we of course have the pattern pieces. Now, because this was factory folded, it means that we need to head over to our iron to actually iron these flat. Now, I am gonna use a low temp, no steam on my iron so I don't actually damage the paper. I went ahead and ironed out the nine pattern pieces we're gonna need for this apron. I also double checked with the instructions to make sure that I had all the pieces that I needed, and I did. This is gonna seem like such a small thing, but I love in these vintage patterns that the pattern pieces are already separate. It doesn't come as a big sheet that you have to carefully unfold and then cut out around it and then iron and then cut. It, it just saves so much time. And also the pattern paper is a little bit thicker, which makes it not so anxiety inducing that you're going to rip it super easy. It's the little things in life, right? And then I did my darndest to try and record a cute little montage of me cutting out all my fabric pieces, but for some reason it turned out to be harder than I thought. After I cut out the bib, it looked really, really small, so I held it up to my chest. And, and that's not even with the seam allowance. With the seam allowance, it would be even worse. It'd be like that. What is that? It's a runway is what it is. So I decided that I was going to add about two inches onto the bib. That got me started thinking about the waistband because my concern was that it would end up looking too small like I was trying to wear like a children's apron or something. And because the ties that go over the shoulder are a pinafore style, so you kind of step into the apron. And I was worried that then the ties would end up coming to the side and not to the back. So I quickly realized I was going to need to add some inches. And when I say some, I don't just mean a couple, I ended up adding eight and a half inches to the waistband on this. I know, right? But I really just wanted to make sure that 
it was going to fit right. And I knew in doing this that it would take away some of the fullness of the apron skirt, but I was okay with that. I figured it was going to go from like a three-time gather to a two-time gather, which I think is still going to have a lot of fun, flirty fullness. You'll have to let me know in the comment section below once you've seen the finished skirt if you think I made the right decision on that or not. The next part I had to tackle was the lower part of the skirt where we were going to have our trim. Now the problem with this is this is the bottom of the apron. This is the part that attaches on to the top part. So the problem comes in that I want this trim to basically come right at the bottom of that. And then if you notice, the trim stops right about here. So the problem is, is I want the top edge of the chiffon to be in the seam allowance, which currently is only gonna happen right here, which is bad times. So what I did was I went ahead and traced out where the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance would end up so that I could determine where I would have to cut the bottom of the skirt to ensure that the trim gets captured into the seams. I then marked off my 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance because this will then fold up and hide up under there, right? So I left a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance that can fold and hide underneath this part of the trim. So I only have to cut off this much, which is only an inch and uh, 5 eighths. So it really didn't take any length away from the apron, which made me incredibly happy because I don't really think you're going to notice a length difference on this at all. And I get to revel in the full beauty and glory that is this trim. The easiest thing to do is going to be to combine these two fabrics so that it acts like one piece of fabric. Now, since the trim already has this really nice hem on it, we're going to start things off by hemming the white pieces. And to do that, all I did was I marked my 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to take it over to the iron and I'm going to iron that seam allowance down. And then I am going to fold in on the seam allowance again so it kind of tucks that raw edge in and then seam that as well. Once that's done, I just simply stitch the hem down and then we are ready to merge the two fabrics. It may seem like I'm over pinning, but this type of material can get pretty slippery and sometimes shift when you're sewing it. And any wrinkle or bubble that forms when we're sewing the pieces together is going to be there. So I wanna make sure I don't have any of that happening. And then all I'm gonna do is take this over to the machine and sew like about a quarter of an inch inside the edge. I want it to be within the seam allowance, but I just wanna lock these two pieces of fabric together and I will not be sewing at the bottom because the hems on both of these pieces of fabric are already finished. So I thought it would be fun to follow the instructions step by step. And step one is to sew our top skirt pieces together. Next, we're gonna be adding the eyelet trim. And because I don't want too much of this to get eaten up in the seam allowance, I am going to place the trim in about an eighth of an inch inside the seam. And then right up here where I'm getting that bulk, I am just going to cut right in to the eyelet so that I can nicely lay it on top of each other. I did end up choosing this eyelet for a couple reasons. One, I really, really do like a good scallop. And the other is I just didn't have enough yardage of the other eyelet to complete this project. But I think this eyelet is going to look adorable on it. Pod on me for interrupting your sewing viewing, but I quickly wanted to remind you I am trying to reach two goals this year, one of which is to reach 
50,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. It is completely free. All you have to do is click the subscribe button. And if you click the notification bell, it will let you know when new videos are posted. And I am also trying to reach 10,000 followers over on Instagram. And we are really, really, really close. Links will be in the description box. And thank you so much to all of you who have already subscribed. Back to your viewing. The cat and I agree that this is the point where we're going to veer away from the instructions. It just seems like excessive steps that don't need to be done. So, <laughs> hi, hi, hi. We'll just move everything over here. So at this point, it wants me to fold this over. Oh my God, I'm getting nothing done. Um, and then stitch along the seam line, which effectively what this is doing is it's stitching the facing down for us but I don't know it seems odd to just have a stitch line there and then I have to worry about that showing up on the outside of the apron so instead what I did I marked all my seam allowances so I'm just going to take this over to the iron really really and iron in my seam allowances. The one thing I should note before I do that, I am going to fold this over backwards and run the stitch from here to here. So everything is folded and pressed and it looks super great from the opposite side, nice and crisp. Here's the other thing that I'm deciding not to follow the directions on. As you can see, the instructions wanted us to sew the eyelet onto the skirt and then sew the pocket onto that. <laughs> My fear was that if I was off at all in the measurements of that, it was going to look really weird and then I would have to take everything off to put it back on. It just made more sense to sew the eyelet directly onto the pocket and then sew all of that together onto the skirt. That way everything is lined up where it's supposed to be and I don't risk making a weird mistake because those have happened to me before. So we have the trim pinned to the pocket. We have the pocket pinned to the lower skirt of the apron. And all I'm going to do is stitch that right on. I've already gone ahead and stitched the lower pieces together. Now it wants me to clip into these lower um, triangle areas uh, within the seam allowance because what we're going to do is we are going to iron down the seam allowance and now it wants us to attach it to the top portion of the skirt. The thing that I had the hardest time wrapping my brain around was this part because I thought that when the skirt was finished that the trim would lay this way so I thought it was strange the way they had us put it on but apparently, no, 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 the trim actually goes up, which makes a lot more sense because what they want us to do now is line up the pieces here on the trim and then we're just gonna do like a, like a quarter inch seam allowance on the skirt and it, it will end up looking like that, which I think is really cute. Then I did a narrow hem on the sides of the skirt, as well as running two gather stitches within the seam allowance at the top of the skirt. Then it wants us to put the two right sides together and stitch around the bib of the apron. Then it wants us to add the lace, but you would be able to see the lace on the back side. So instead, I want to actually sandwich the lace in between the two layers. So I the other change that I made is where the two dots are from the pattern where the necktie will slot in. It originally had a stitching right across that. I left that open so that I could tuck the necktie in between the two layers and then that way it wouldn't be on the outside of the fabric at the end like it actually wants us to. It'll be a cleaner look doing it this way. This part got a little bit confusing, but basically uh, this is the outside of the apron. So this is the right side of the fabric. So we've stitched the waistband on. So now what it wants us to do is take the skirt itself and we're going to attach it to the waistband. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the front of it 
and and we're gonna stitch it to the waistband like that. I feel like it's a really weird way to show you how you're stitching this on. When it's all stitched, the waistband's gonna come up over this and cover it. So it is all stitched together. The other thing that I did is I added interfacing to the waistband. So then after we add the ties, the waistband will get folded over and stitched down. Now I'm just gonna add the ties onto the apron and if all goes well, you will next see me in the apron. <laughs> Who would have thought I would be back so soon? But here's the thing is it wants me on the ties to just do like a narrow hem all the way around. But here's the thing though, if I do that, like this wrong side is gonna be, you're gonna see it. I know, my long tailed assistant says, I don't think so. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make this a tube. So I'm just gonna turn it this way and I'm gonna stitch it and then turn it right side out. That way both sides of the tie will be the lovely outside of the fabric. I am so excited about how this turned out. Can we just say I am tickled pink? <laughs> I have never walked away from a project 100% happy with the way it turned out, but I will say that this one is the closest I have ever gotten. I love the stripe that we chose. I love the brightness of the color. I love the eyelet choice, but hands down my favorite thing on this apron is the the state sale trim. It just gives it that special something that will always make me smile when I see it. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's sewing project and if you did be sure to hit that thumbs up and of course I love hearing from you so go ahead in the comment section below let me know what you guys thought of the apron what you would have done differently and of course if you have any tips or tricks I would love to hear from you guys and of course before I let you go a huge subscriber shout out to Alenia Umbrella. I'm hope I didn't get that wrong but thank you so so much for watching my videos liking them commenting and just being a part of our cozy little online community and of course if you're gonna miss this space between uploads be sure and follow me on all the social media as a vintage vanity if you want to keep watching my videos go ahead and click that video you see playing right there and of course to be notified when new videos here are posted go ahead and click that subscribe button it is completely free I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you soon bye